And after a somewhat long wait, I feel like the chapter came out like later than it usually does for some reason. Like I don't know what, what was going on with that. But we finally have uh, Four Nights of the Apocalypse, Chapter 7, uh, Demon of the Gorge. In this chapter, I feel like I feel like we're finally like truly setting on to Percival's like individual journey. And there's also some like there's only one big thing that I want to talk about later on in this chapter for sure. Um, but it, it starts off where, if you remember last chapter, they're on their way to a Leonis or Lioness, however you want to call it. And they just got to the end of Dragon's Backbone. Now with this, um, you know, they, they are, like I just said, supposed to set way exactly for uh, Leonis. Because as Sin said, it is really far away, but Percival is hungry. So I guess they're going to stop for dinner, which, you know, it makes sense. Um, so Percival has the funny idea of, you know, them all competing to see who can catch like the biggest and baddest prey, which is just funny because just how innocent and carefree per Percival is, it really fits him. Uh, like little moments like these do make the story just kind of that much more funnier to me personally. I also think it's really funny that like before Percival sets out, like he has his bow and arrow and like Donnie just like, he's like, nah, he's like, give me that. <laughs> it's like, you can't be trusted. <laughs> and it's really funny because like it, it, uh, if you re remember, Percival is like a like awful shot. Like he can't hit anything like Percival so bad that his arrows curved back around and hit targets behind him so he's 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 really bad so basically while they're hunting Percival finds you know the giant gorge where he hears a lot of, of like echo so Percival's playing around in there while Donnie and Sin hunt on their own and it's in this moment when like Donnie is hunting for you know animals to try to capture them to eat one of the arrows that he misses hits a giant and it's like a giant dressed as like a nun worshiping like a image of the the goddess which is very interesting um as like sin notes because it's rare to see a giant worshiping the goddess as opposed to um as opposed to mother earth and now if you aren't familiar with lots of the laurel and giants in, in the seven deadly sins verse basically the giant clan doesn't really follow the same practices that say like the goddess clan or the humans whereas uh the giants really worship the earth for its natural resources it kind of goes in line with their ability creation how giants can manipulate the earth in the seven deadly sins verse so that's kind of why they like pay homage more so to that as opposed to the goddess so th this this giant doing that is very odd and then another thing that makes it even crazier is when some fairies come in and they scream the giant's name is uh, Dolores now I'm pretty sure not uh, very many people remember this at all but Dolores was the name of one of the uh, Diane's friends back when she was still with uh, Matrona like I, she kind of looks different in, in, in here like she, she definitely looks different because she looks much smaller but at the same time the name is still the, the same and as we know from Seven Deadly Sins um, the author is no like stranger to having characters that were supposedly dead still be alive in the future such as Matrona or with like Veronica when they thought she died or with like Hawk in the beginning when they thought he died like there's so many characters that like people thought were dead that weren't dead that came back to Elaine like there's so many characters in Seven Dead Deadly Sins that people thought were dead that come back so like it's not too too crazy to think that she would still be alive especially because how she died if you don't remember it was just said that she went on a mission and died in battle so it's like there weren't really any explicit details on what exactly happened so to bring her back would kind of make it like like there would be a window for it so i, I mean i'm i think it could be her i mean there's all chance it could just be a giant with the same name but i feel like that's really really rare it'd be really unlikely so I'm, I'm going for this as uh, Deanne's childhood friend. Yes, but the fairies are basically telling them that there is a strange kid in the gorge, which is obviously Percival. And Percival in the gorge is really funny because he's having a field day. Like, he's just beating up all these, like, creepy animals and monsters. Like, he's just knocking them out. He's like, this place is, like, amazing. And Because, you know, Percival's powerful. He's not even using his magic. He's just knocking them out with just his raw physical power, uh, <laughs> which is just crazy. Um, but in the distance, Percival does hear somebody asking for help. And then we get this flash of um, what I'm assuming is a fairy uh, trap by a person and then as it flashes back over which is like one thing i will say about this chapter i, I do like it when like stories split up between like one uh between like two or three groups and we kind of like get to flash back and forth between them as things are happening like i kind of like how that goes on like earlier when they had first ran into the giant they said a child was wandering around in the gorge and then we got to see percival and then like right here where like the guy was asking for help and then we would find him and then they like talk about what actually is going on in the gorge as we see when percival like he busts in the guy has basically the fairy tied up and like cornered uh, but the really interesting thing here is that it looks like the guy is staring directly at the fairy's forehead because like it's kind of bleeding a little bit and it looks like he's looking directly in at that and then when Percival like busts in to save him and he turns around like the guy has like blood dripping down from his mouth so like 
it's one of those things where like i feel like people are going to immediately assume that this guy is one of the four nights of the apocalypse or one of them but like i kind of don't think he is i kind of feel like i almost kind of feel like he might not even be a demon he might be a vampire and just like just off of those two instances just of him staring at the blood and him having blood dripping down his face i feel like he might be a vampire i mean he could there is a possibility it could be Zeldris's and Gelda's kid, but I mean, you never know. It's just I, I'm I'm literally basing all of this just off of the uh, the blood. I'm very curious to know what you guys think. But basically, when Percival charges him, he trips him, and you know this allows Percival, or not really allows him, but like after that, Percival is close enough to kind of just break the ropes on the guy, and then the guy just flies away. So while Percival is like amazed that this dude is a fairy, uh, the guy just kind of stabs him, and I'm assuming it had some type of po poison or potion or tranquilizer type effect to just knock Percival out and we do find out at the end of the chapter that his name is Nansen's or Nansen's the Mad Herbus I know I have no idea how to pronounce the name so if you have a, a preferred pronunciation let me know that also down below we find out that he's basically a mad herbalist which I'm going to assume will be along the lines of like a like a like a like traditional alchemist type character something along those lines not like full-on full metal but like like alchemy in, in terms of like making potions and, and tonics and the, things of those lines so as I was saying earlier, I do not believe for this guy to be one of the Four Nights of the Apocalypse. I, I think he's related to vampires in some way, shape, or form. Maybe, like, even if he isn't, like, Zeldris and, and uh, Gelda's kid, I, I do think he has some type of, like, relation there, just off of the whole blood thing. And I don't think this guy is innately evil either. It's, he just, I'm not getting that, that vibe flat out. Um, as for the chapter itself, though, I thought it was, it, it was cool. I mean, nothing really happened in this chapter all like that, so I'd probably give it a six. I am really interested to know what's up with the stuff with Dolores. That's probably the most interesting thing of the chapter for me because she was supposed to be dead, so I'm very curious to know like, what the story is there. I, I like how in Seven Deadly Sins, how a lot of times characters we think are dead have really interesting stories, such as, like, you know, Matrona, who, who we thought was dead, but really she was just poisoned and then the human saved her and all that kind of stuff. So I, I just really want to know Del uh, Dolores' story on that one. So, yeah. Let me know how you guys feel in the chapter down below. What you guys rated, your opinions, thoughts on the new guy, and all that good stuff. Make sure you guys like the video and sub to the channel for more Fortnite Spikos content. I really do appreciate all the support I've been getting on this stuff uh, so far. You guys are amazing for that. Um, but yeah, outside of that, I have nothing else for you guys. So enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you all in my next video.